embark on a cosmic adventure as we explore what if female Deku journeyed across galaxies? Join us for Unseen Hero, Rise of Izumi Part 2. Okay Midoriya, we're going on patrol said Ryukyu, looking at her protege. They had been training for the last three days, and the girl's powers kept surprising her. Izumi's eyes opened slightly before blinking twice, completely confused. Patrol now, as it's getting dark? We're in a densely populated city, so crimes are higher. Despite what you see on TV, criminals come out more at night than during the day explained Ryukyu, hands on her hips. The green-haired girl nodded, and they both left the office. You can dress like this only because you're with me. Otherwise, since you still lack a hero license, you'd be fined and charged with vigilantism. In Hasu, the aquatic hero manual strolled in Hasu alongside Ida, who was in his armor. The professional hero sighed. Just another day patrolling in Hasu, sorry it's not much fun. Actually, I think I prefer it this way admitted Tenya, though he was lying. Hey, I really hate to ask, but, you want to find the hero killer, right? That's all I can think of for you choosing my agency, as they say he's right here, in Hasu said Manuel, realizing how wrong that sounded and getting nervous. I mean, I'm glad you chose my agency. Don't get me wrong. But you have to remember, surveillance is heavily penalized. Heroes can't arrest or punish, it's only because of regulatory advancements that we can hit the streets and deliver a crude parody of justice. After all, it's patrolling that allows us to keep people calm. When they feel protected, with heroes coming and going all around, we can say we're doing our job said Ida. A smile appeared on Manuel's face, having this guy, so full of regulations and procedures, talk about that told him he had achieved his goal. Ryukyu and Ashla flew over Hasu when they heard explosions and saw the city engulfed in flames and smoke. Time to act, Ashla. Said Ryukyu as they descended. They're Nomas. Ashla exclaimed in astonishment. Five approached her, but Ryukyu crushed them. More of those things came towards them, but Ashla levitated debris from a building and forced through them at other Nomas. Some debris reached their brains, killing them. When some of them rose again, she threw as many light poles as she could and twisted them to act as restraints. Several professional heroes appeared just as more Nomas did, and the professionals ordered lower-ranking heroes like Ashla to assist in evacuating civilians, which she immediately did, following standard procedure she had learned from these heroes, who had learned it at the academy. Ashla had a force vision in which she saw Tenya die. She felt him close, in the force. Very close. She turned her gaze to the right. Ryukyu. Her mentor for the week looked at her, finding it odd that she pointed to a random alley. A friend of mine is in that alley, intending to kill Stain, the hero killer. A pair of professional heroes followed her for support, Freaky Dragon and Crazy Bird. A disguised kid, who are you? Stain asked. I am. The younger brother of a hero you attacked. Declared Ida, clad in his armor. I've inherited his name, Ingenium. Is that so? Stain asked, ready to kill him, only to see hundreds of plants sprout, especially grass. The grass grew tall and tied around Stain's arms. A hero with chlorokinesis? He looked and saw Crazy Bird pulling Native and the fallen Ida away. Freaky Dragon pulled out a chain and tied his arms to his torso, then got rid of the villain's swords and knives. Neither of you two has these powers. So. He saw the green-haired girl dressed as a monk. I see. You saved their lives, prioritizing the Indian heroes and the armored boys' lives. What's your name? Ashla good job, heroine. He didn't try to fight as he was pulled out of that alley, the other professional heroes quickly called for patrol and took Stain away, while the heroes were interrogated, and they admitted that it was thanks to Ashla, civilians photographed the girl, she quickly talked about the issue, and the professionals said they didn't know exactly what the colorful monsters with exposed brains were, except that they were called Nomus and that they were the army of the League of Villains. However, the news and newspapers barely mentioned the League of Villains, which infuriated Tomura, who would ensure that the League of Villains reached the top. Tomura growled furiously and crumpled the newspaper. It's in all the news. The hero killer is everywhere. No one pays attention to the Nomus. Damn it, damn it. At the same time, in Bestianus's office. I know the Hasu issue must be on your mind said the well-groomed hero in jean clothes as he took a comb and ran it through Bakugo's hair and it's in times of chaos like this that heroes must develop quietly. Occasionally, chaos comes to deceive people, to draw out cruelty and tyranny from the root of themselves. Sure thing, bestianist, said his other assistants as Bakugo's hair returned to normal. 
I picked the wrong agency thought Baku go, now feeling down. A few days later, UA. Kirishima and Saro burst into laughter, seeing their blonde, scarlet-eyed companion's hair. Seriously Baku go? Don't laugh, it's stuck, so washing it won't fix it. Growled Baku go. So, did you have any battles against villains? Asked a smiling Mina. Well, I just stopped some stowaways on a ship, not much said Tsuyu, shrugging. At least you did something, I only had to provide support said Kyoka, somewhat saddened. I just appeared in a commercial but Momo was truly down. Ochako seemed much braver. The girls remembered she went with a martial arts hero. Mina grabbed a towel and walked up to Bakugo. It doesn't look bad on you, but. It doesn't feel natural on you Bakugo started cursing as she rubbed his hair with a towel. When she stopped, Bakugo's hair had returned to its spiky form. A few minutes later, the class 1A heroes gathered at training ground Gamma. I'm glad to see you all again, young ones. Today, we'll have a race. Use your quirks, show your growth. I'll be at the center of this field. And how's Gamma Field? Dense lanes make this construction site feel more like a maze. You'll make teams of five, then four of you will position yourselves at each of the four entrances, which will open, and I'll give a signal. Let's see who's the first to reach me. A race to save me. Hanta threw his tape to tie to a lamppost. Mina released acid from her feet and started sliding. Tenya ran as fast as he could, thanks to his quirk. Ojiro jumped and clung to a high pipe with his tail. Izumi jumped and used the force with hands backward, propelling herself forward. And young Midoriya managed to come in first. Said All Might smiling, handing the former Jedi a strip of cloth that read, Thanks for rescuing me all of you have shown great growth. You've learned to use your quirks more freely, and Midoriya has used her force abilities with greater creativity. Prepare yourselves for the end of term exams and for training camp. Training camp? The four asked, surprised by this. But All Might didn't say a single extra word. The end of term exam arrived. There was only one week left. I didn't study at all. Kaminari shouted, horrified. Don't worry about that, Kaminari, said Tokoyami. How can I not worry? With the sports festival and work experience, we haven't had many classes, explained Tokoyami. But that didn't calm Kaminari, who was so desperate that he started releasing electricity from his quirk while shedding tears of blood, not knowing what to do. Immediately, Izumi extended her hand and absorbed the electricity from the blonde, while ceasing to use her quirk, and Izumi sighed. Mina approached her desperate friend. Focus on the practical exam, but also study for the written exam, Mina said with a smile. Izumi turned in her seat when she heard a soft thud and saw Bakugo smiling gently at her. Nice job with. She thought for the right word, spinning her wrist until she found it, then snapped her fingers absorbing Kaminari's quirk before someone got hurt. Thanks, Kachan, said the green-haired girl, blushing. On her desk, she had two books, taking in as much as she could from the lessons. Momo chuckled softly, and everyone turned to her, interested in her laughter. She had an aura worthy of some kind of divine being. I can help with the written part, offered her brilliant mind, worthy of Athena, before becoming downcast. But with the practical part, not so much. I can't grasp the application of quadratic functions, said blushing Kyoka. Can you help me with classic literature? Hanta pleaded. I need help with history, Ojiro asked, embarrassed. Of course, said Momo with a smile, tearing out one of the last pages of her notebook and handing them a scrap with her address written on it, inviting them to the review class. The students spent their weekend studying and used the following week to do the same until Friday arrived. The day of the practical test. It was a surprise to discover that they would have to face, or flee from slash two, their teachers. And those who had it worse were Izumi and Momo, who would go against All Might. Both girls were overwhelmed with absolute terror. Escaping or attacking would be impossible if they were going against the symbol of peace, and both knew it. All Might attacked them immediately, hurling debris at both. Izumi stood in front of Momo and extended her hands forward, using the force telekinesis to stop the debris, sighing. She brought her hands back while sweating, her forehead already shining, feeling disgusted as she felt her sideburns bathed in sweat, then noticed the large amount of debris in front of her. This is. Like. Moving a separatist destroyer. My arms will hurt later. And then she moved forward, launching her leg and torso forward. All might punch the sky, and the debris followed the air pressure. 
Momo created a sniper rifle and fired three shots. But All Might struck a building, causing it to divert in front of him, and the bullets released sticky nets that harmlessly stuck to the debris. Collateral damage, who cares? If you're thinking of it as an exam, then be prepared to suffer. Izumi focused the force, concentrated on feeling nature, and directed the living force in the ground to surge and bind All Might, climbing like thorny rose stems. We are ready to overcome this, and she unleashed a force push, sending All Might flying, who was already taking too long to free himself from Momo's sticky nets, the thorny stems, and now, he also needed to stop his flight through the air. It was difficult for him to break free, but he finally managed it and stopped his flight through the air, kicking backward. As if the sticky trap wasn't enough, I was cut by the thorny stems and sent flying. Those two. Have done very well. And he charged again. Nebraska smash. Both girls shouted as the wind pressure from that symbol of peace's punch pulled them into a tornado. When the tornado was ending, both girls were hugged, while a parachute carried them to the exit. New Hampshire smash. All Might quickly turned his back and struck forward, sending himself backward and hitting his students' backs, hearing many bone snaps. All Might's blow, which could well have been interpreted as a push, allowed both of them to fly toward the exit, and paradoxically, they won, although they would be in bed due to back problems. Dot the girls caught Izumi at the country's best shopping center, located in Kyushu, just after Aizawa handed something to the green-haired girl. I'm so glad we can all come too, Mina said cheerfully as she walked with Izumi, Shoto, Momo, Katsuki, Denki, and Eijiro. They were all together in one group. This is the mall with the most shops in the prefecture, perfect for today's youth. The Kiyashi District Mall. You have six arms. We have what you need, a merchant told Shoji, before noticing Tenya. And you with the big calves. They're from the sports festival. Some young people their age shouted. Wow, people still remember us, Ochako said, somewhat intimidated by the cheers. I need to buy insect repellent and shoes. I need shoes too, can I come with you? Denki asked Ochako, ignoring the jealous Shoto. Me too, me too. Hagakure chimed in. Ever responsible, Ida spoke up immediately. The guide says you should wear shoes that you're already used to. For now, I just need a big bag, Kyoka told Momo. In that case, we could go together, Momo said with a smile. Seeing as we all need different things, can we decide on a time to meet back here? Eijiro asked. Let's meet at the food court, which is in that direction, Izumi said. What will you buy, Midoriya? Momo asked, realizing her friend hadn't said anything. She shrugged. In the temple, we were taught not to have material possessions. If I remember enough from Japan, even though I left so young, maybe we'll have some kind of hot springs on the trip, so I'll get a swimsuit. Maybe another pair of t-shirts and shorts, I only have skirts and long pants, she said, searching her pants and pulling out a credit card. Sensei gave me this. He knows I don't have many things here and told me to spend as if there's no tomorrow. The Jedi Knight shivered and soon found herself being dragged by Momo and Hagakure to buy various outfits, something casual like a jacket, long sleeve shirt, and pants, something more informal like a short sleeve shirt and shorts, and then they bought various types of shirts, sleeveless, short sleeved, long sleeved, a formal dress, button up shirts, and long sleeves, etc. even a swimsuit. Various styles of glasses, headbands, ribbons, necklaces, and bracelets. Once reunited and making sure they had everything for their trip, the UA students gathered at the food court, sitting at a table. Behind them was a man with a black hood. Oh, if it isn't UA's. 1A, right? He changed positions, revealing his face. Blue-gray hair, red eyes. Shigaraki. Shoto began, only to end up pushing his head and body backward as Tomura reached his hand toward him and lowered it slowly. I just want to talk, he assured them, but seeing at least Hagakure and Todoroki seemed ready to attack him, he changed his tone, his voice rather cold as he passed his hand over Izumi's shoulder and his index and middle fingers touched the ex-Jedi's collarbone. Do anything strange and at least 30 of the people here will die before they can move. What do you want to talk about? Shoji growled, eager to use his six arms just to crush the idiot sitting in front of him. There's a store, a couple of streets, let's say, down, called underground, where there are hero goods, but also villain goods. Villains like Stain, he explained. But don't get confused because it's not necessarily fame that the League seeks. The invasion of UA, the Nomus in Hasu. All of that was overshadowed by that bastard's fame. Why doesn't anyone look at me? He. He destroyed things he didn't like, just like I do. What's the difference between us two? No one answered. 
The pressure was immense. You said it at the USJ, Izumi said, and everyone breathed again as they looked at the green-haired girl. You want to destroy the society that All Might has created. Just destroy without the desire to build anything, just give way to a kind of eternal civil war between heroes and villains. Let the heroes who don't care about ranking or fame live. Those who give everything without expecting anything in return, Tenya said, remembering his encounter with the black-haired villain, beige mask, and red scarf. Create better heroes. That's what Stain does, that's what the public can agree with him on. He seeks to create something better through his sacrifice, and you just seek to destroy. Shigaraki felt something. He felt like something was crushing his heart, he put his hands to his chest, only to start undoing his clothes and then his skin, he looked at the young heroes and noticed Izumi. How? Do you call yourself? Jade girl? Ashla, she said, staring at him. Shigaraki stood up and slowly walked away, due to the pain, until Izumi let him go. Professional heroes and police officers arrived to attend to the 1A students and interrogate them. Izumi then spoke about another of her abilities, seeing inside the minds of weak people, and she told them, with a great smile of pleasure, all about Shigaraki's personal life and where they could find him. When All Might learned that his teacher had only one living grandson, who was a villain, he immediately knew that All for One must have found him and turned him against them. Now, he was torn between trying to bring Shigaraki back to the light or facing him as the villain he was. The next day, Class 1A Classroom. We will change the plan location for our school trip. We will only tell you the day of the trip, Aizawa said, tearing up a piece of paper. We can celebrate that the trip isn't cancelled, Momo said, smiling. I hope you brought everything you need, Aizawa said, and everyone nodded. In that case, let's go. They all followed him to the buses, where they met Class 1B, and each class boarded its own bus, beginning a very long journey. Meeting Point You can get off, Aizawa said, the first to get off at a viewpoint, meeting two women in band outfits, one with short reddish-brown hair, the other with long blonde hair. I introduce you to Mandalay and Pixie Bob, the leader and the right hand of the Wild Wild Pussy Cats rescue team. Then we'll start training right away, Mandalay said, smiling, as she turned around, arms outstretched. Everything you can see down there is our property. So go wild and use your quirks to the fullest, and don't worry about possible damages. So why are we staying here? A confused Ochako asked. You don. T think? Rikido began. Everyone to the bus. Denki shouted. But Pixie Bob was already there. Kittens who don't make it by six o'clock won't be able to eat. Earth wave. She touched the ground and a wave of earth fell on everyone, sending them to the bottom of the pit, but leaving them unharmed. They started running, only to come across many earth monsters. Denki let himself be surrounded by several monsters and released his electricity, destroying them. Rikido and Ejiro destroyed one earth monster after another, punching one after another. Momo always graceful in combat, used a steel bow staff. Tokoyami let Dark Shadow deal with the monsters. Ochako made them levitate, Suyu tangled them with her tongue, and then they threw them against other monsters, like meteorites. Bakugo used his explosions against the monsters. Mina threw large amounts of acid until she could make a dent in a monster. Izumi had a calm smile as she used a very specific force power, normally used to disarm droids, but she used it to turn the beasts into piles of sand. They arrived at 6 o'clock and were grateful to have their dinner ready. But they were warned that, starting the next day, they would have to cook everything themselves. The UA students woke up very early. Aizawa made sure they got up early, and none of them liked it very much, being awake when the sun was barely rising. I know you all want to keep sleeping, but this is why we're here, Eraserhead said. It's time to progress, to evolve your quirks. It's not time to slack off, you will be the next generation of heroes. Bakugo caught what his teacher threw to him. This is. From the quirk training test, the red-eyed blonde said, examining the softball. You know what to do, Eraser Head said, holding his phone with the distance counting app activated. Die. All his classmates cheered at the distance Bakugo just threw the ball before their teacher showed them the reality in the app's numbers. This crap is broken, he roared furiously. It was impossible, he had been making so much progress, it couldn't be that simple. The growth you've had so far has been emotional and technical. It's time for physical growth, Aizawa said. As you can see, your quirks have advanced, at most, marginally. So, from today on, we will focus on improving your quirks. You will be pushed beyond your limits. So try not to disappoint me. Improve our quirks? Kendo asked confused, 
hearing her teacher Vlad King. Class 1A already had their chance to shine. Now it's our turn, I hope you understand that, Vlad King said as he began to walk, followed by his students. Our humblest apologies, sensei, the men thought, wounded in their pride. We regret being useless students. Quirks are like a muscle. When you use it too much, you break the muscle fibers, which grow back stronger and thicker, Vlad King explained. So we'll use the same principle so that each and every one of you goes beyond the limits of your quirks. For Izumi's training, she had direct support from Pixie Bob, who created all kinds of golems, some with human form and solid stone, others with the form of earth and sand snakes, and others were bulls and tigers made of precious stones underground. She also trained in martial arts with Tiger, along with Ajiro, Masharao, and Rikido. Momo ate a lot of chocolates and created Matryoshka dolls. Tokoyami entered a dark cave to engage in a battle of wills with Dar Shadow, his quirk, to control it. But this went beyond ordinary training, beyond just suffering during training because they had to learn to use their quirks for simple things like cooking their own dinner. As she finished her curry, Izumi stopped eating for a moment and looked to her right, closing her eyes and concentrating until she felt a hand on top of hers. She looked at Momo and blushed. Is everything okay, Izumi-chan? Momo asked, looking worried at the ex-Jedi. No. It's not, she declared, standing up. I'm sensing ten presences with very bad intentions. Everyone looked at her and stood up as Izumi told them as best she could about the positions of the enemies, only for the forest to explode in blue flames. Everyone ran to see what was happening, but soon, the problems found them. Are you getting slow, eraser head? Someone asked to his right, who was soon sent flying. Not exactly, Izumi said, smiling, before frowning as she looked at the person. Black hair, patches in several parts of the body, quite normal against burns. Your strength. Your life force is tied to someone else. Wow, you're quite interesting, kid, the person said, throwing a blue fireball at Izumi, who extended her arms forward, raising a wall with the force preventing the flames from reaching her companions before pushing the invisible wall toward her opponent, burning him. But instead of screaming, the person just started laughing. Can you save them all, eraser head? A red-slash-pink aura surrounded Pixie Bob's head, who was sent flying, encountering a muscular man with reddish-brown hair, who had a cement block in his arms and slammed it on the woman's head. It. It was supposed to be a safe place, Mineta said terrified, taking a few steps back, unable to believe that this was happening to them again. So. Then why are the villains here? Don't worry, Mineta kun Izumi said, closing her eyes and extending her right hand before closing it, destroying her enemy's cement block. We can handle her. Just as we can handle the others who are in the forest. She raised her hand in the air before lowering it, and a moist and cold wind came from behind them, extinguishing the fire. Pixie Bob hit the ground, and her enemy was sent flying by a stream of earth. Well said, girl. We can defeat these villains. She extended her arms to the sides and was captured by stone chains. Who are you, and how did you find this place? We are the vanguard action squad of Shigaraki Tomura, the woman said, now suspended in the air. Izumi's eyes opened wide as she received a vision. Mandalay, Koda is in the hands of one of these individuals, in the southern mountain. No. Mandalay screamed horrified at this. Ajiro hardened his skin. I'll take care of it. I'll bring him back safe and sound, I promise. I'll guide you with telepath, and Ragdoll will help me with search to guide you. Tetsu Tetsu saw something shining and stood in front of Tsuyu and Ochako. Watch out! He covered himself in metal and received no fewer than ten knives in his body. Who threw them? A blonde girl with disheveled buns, golden cat-like eyes, gleaming fangs, and dressed as a sailor appeared, holding a knife in her hand. Ah! I want to see my friends bleeding. I want to see their precious red blood the real battle was about to begin as the villains emerged from the forest. What was this vanguard action squad looking for? What was their real objective? And why, once again, was UA being attacked, especially in a place that was supposed to be safe and a total secret? There was a traitor somewhere, that was now obvious to Aizawa and Vlad King. And what made it worse, the traitor had to be there, among the students or the villains, they would have never known this location otherwise. Hey, it's not fair said the girl with blonde hair, golden eyes like a cat, and those knives. I can't pierce your skin and drink your precious blood if you're metallic. The guy who had been floating in the air used his quirk and pulled several classmates and the pussycats towards him to attack them. But Tiger, the only guy in the group, approached a tree, climbed it quickly, and tackled him. 
we might find more villains in the forest because of that smoke they're producing, said Shoji. Hey, Blondie, said Ochako, getting into a battle stance as Gunhead had taught her, with Tsuyu behind her, ready to support. I'm Himiko, said the blonde with golden eyes. Koga Himiko. Those heading into the forest, everyone turned to Momo, and she gently extended her hand towards the ground, revealing many gas masks. Here you go. In the forest, Itsuka Kendo would lead their classmates in the search for the source of the smoke. How far is class A? We all took the same test to get into the academy and went through the same curriculum. So what's the difference between us? It's clear as day. What they have that we don't have. Exposure to danger. He encased his body in steel. They've handled dangerous situations better than us. What kind of heroes would we be if we turned a blind eye to those threatening others' lives? That's right, Tetsu Tetsu, Kendo suddenly said. The gas ISNT spreading further but seems to be staying put and surrounding an area. Someone is manipulating the gas, we could find them, beat them, and end this gas business. The issue is the limit the filters might have. The higher the concentration of particles in the air, the shorter their duration. Let's just run to find them and kick their butt, said Tetsu Tetsu, starting to run. Basically, said Kendo, following his friend. He doesn't have more than two functioning neurons. But. There's nothing wrong with that. In the center of the smoke, a man dressed like a student from some prestigious school and wearing a gas mask. In this direction. Three. No. Two people. But it doesn't matter if they're from a famous school. He drew a pistol from his shirt. Tetsu Tetsu appeared. There you are. They're just humans, said the man, shooting at Tetsu Tetsu. Elsewhere, Todoroki created a wide, strong ice wall to save Kosei, Katsuki, and himself from a disturbing villain with razor-like teeth that he could stretch at will. Todoroki, Bakugo, we need you to use fire. Shoji requested. They saw Shoji being chased by Tokoyami, who had been possessed by Dark Shadow, while Karasu Tengu shouted for them to run, to get away from him. Within this gas, it's only a matter of time before you can't hold your breath anymore and fall unconscious, said the villain. Todoroki grabbed Bakugo around the waist, who got angry. What do you think you're doing, half and half? The explosive user growled, only for Todoroki to generate a tilted ice pillar, lifting them into the air, away from the toothed man. I see, thought Shoji, diving to the side. Tetsu Tetsu took all the shots from his enemy and covered Kendo when necessary. Fools with hardening quirks like you, resorting to endurance fights. His enemy bent backward, like Neo dodging bullets. But to dodge Kendo's giant hand. Aren't you supposed to be a future hero? Are you just going to stand there taking my shots? A hollow-headed idiot like you, relying only on your academic background. Three more bullets hit Tetsu Tetsu, who didn't move, who didn't stop covering his friend. The world has spoiled you. He narrowly dodged Kendo's clenched fist, which began to move. He's dispersing my gas. An idiot like you, wielding a gun to fight, are you saying you have no confidence to fight seriously? Said Kendo, managing to trap him with his hand, allowing Tetsu Tetsu to strike, destroy his mask, and render him unconscious. A frenzied dark shadow struck the villain Munshine until defeating him. Immediately after this, Todoroki used his fire and Bakugo his explosions to return dark shadow inside Tokoyami. Ochako and Tsuyu were facing Himiko. But it was a bad idea for Tsuyu to extend her tongue, as it allowed Himiko to cut it, just a little. But Tsuyu didn't mind, she tied her tongue around her friend's waist and sent her flying. While in the air, Ochako removed gravity. Go to the building. Just because we're allowed to fight doesn't mean we should. But what about you? Ochako asked, concerned. When Tsuyu went to follow her friend, Himiko threw up to six knives at her, warning her that she wouldn't escape so easily. And she still had several left. Don't you mind if I call you Tsutsu? Himiko asked. Only my friends can give me a nickname, growled Tsuyu as she began to fight Himiko, trying to dodge the knives and land some kicks. In one of the kicks, she managed to disarm Himiko and, extending her tongue again, took her belt. Himiko let out a war cry, and they began a new hand-to-hand -hand combat, which would have been magnificent if anyone were watching. From the bushes emerged a boy from Class B. Magnificent spinning punch. The black-haired boy with his right arm spinning, hitting Himiko in the abdomen and sending her flying. Are you okay, Suyu-san? Suyu sighed, now calmer. I am now, thanks for your help. Um. I'm Kabura sen From Class 1B, obviously, Suyu nodded, and I think you already know my name. Come on, we need to go. When Sen and Suyu found Todoroki, Tokoyami, 
and Shoji, they realized Bakugo had disappeared. Looking at a tree, they saw a villain dressed as a dandy, holding a marble in his hand. Thanks for everything, guys. Bakugo had disappeared, and perhaps ten students were injured. In the hospital, Momo informed her teachers about how she had created a tracker and how one of the boys from Class 1B, Awase, had welded the same tracker to the back of the Nomu. Dot. Slash slash slash. The UA Master Heroes divided into three groups to assault the League of Villains. Some went after the Nomus, others to rescue Bakugo, and the last three heroes, Director Nezu, Eraser Head, and Vlad King, were holding a press conference to distract everyone. Please clarify your intentions to all of us, asked a journalist. Since we couldn't control the decision, I made the call to allow the students to engage in combat, said Aizawa. When we found out who the League of Villains was targeting, we ordered student Bakugo Katsuki to return to the central cabin for his own safety. But the young man didn't listen, did he? Why can't UA control one of its students? The same journalist inquired. Why do soldiers go to a war zone knowing they'll encounter enemy soldiers? Why do police respond to a bank robbery or a jewelry store heist? Why do heroes fight villains who appear in the middle of the street or in an abandoned house? Aizawa asked the man. It's simple, this is our job, it's what we do. It's our duty to civilians who only wish to live a full and peaceful life. Bakugo Katsuki knew the danger he and all his classmates were in and chose to help fight the villains. Dot. Slash slash slash. I want you to join us, Bakugo Katsuki, said Tomura. Spinner, please, remove his handcuffs. Spinner looked at his boss in disbelief. As soon as I take them off, this guy will blow everything sky high. He did it anyway, only for all of them to be sent flying by a powerful explosion. Spinner said it slash Spinner didn't say it. He's just a liar, said twice. Stay right where you are, warned Dobby, pointing at him with his index and middle fingers like a gun, a tiny blue flame appearing on his fingers. Baku Gokun, if you can hear me, then you are allowed to engage in combat, said the director. You heard the director, you bunch of useless jerks. Someone knocked on the door. The pizza's here. The door exploded, and All Might entered. Kamui Woods went on guard. Sensei hit Subaku Urushi Saro. He extended his fingers and branches grew from his forearms, capturing all the members of the League. A portal opened, taking the League and Bakugo away, and suddenly hundreds of portals opened to release the Nomus, giving Endeavor his five minutes of fame fighting Nomus. Endeavor, I leave the city to you. It's in your hands. I have unfinished business. Dot. Slash slash slash. At the same time, feeling guilty, Momo, Tenya, Izumi, Eijiru, and Shadow used a second tracker and went in search of Bakugo, unaware that Momo had made a mistake, and this was a second tracker from the Nomu factory. They only discovered it when they arrived and saw Mount Lady, Jinist, and the wild wild pussycats. When Ragdoll was rescued, Best Jinist wrapped a mysterious man in threads, but his comrades thought he was just a civilian and wanted him released. The man's right arm grew in size and caused the place to explode. Izumi used the force, created a force field, and contained the explosion. That guy. He's not normal, she whispered. Clearly, he's a villain, Midoriya, whispered Ida. She shook her head and tried to explain. He bears some resemblance. To the Nomus. He's a bearer of more than one quirk, he has hundreds of them, and. He terrifies me. The League of Villains and Bakugo are here, whispered Momo, containing a squeal. Right there was Bakugo, who soon began to counterattack the League, trying to escape. Only for All Might to appear, and the man with multiple quirks grabbed the boss's fists as if they were nothing. I'll make you return everything, all for one. Growled All Might. I see you've weakened, All Might, said All for One, using a compressed air quirk, sending All Might flying, who quickly returned and managed to land a direct hit to All for One's face. We have to get to Bakugo and get him out of trouble, whispered Izumi. If we don't, All Might won't be able to fight at full strength. Izumi used force push, after taking advantage of All Might hitting all for one against a building, to use force push and make the building collapse on the League members, while Bakugo moved away from that place, only to come across his smiling classmates. I'll take Bakugo Shonen home, and you'll share a cell with your League of Idiots. Growled All Might. Detroit smash. But all for one grabbed his hand and unleashed a powerful wind wave, sending All Might flying. Let's see if you survive this. His hand was surrounded by lightning 
and he fired a powerful lightning bolt that caused a new explosion. Yes. You're alive. At that moment, he turned and saw an elderly man, dressed in white, with a cape, gloves, and yellow boots, who knocked out almost the entire league with a blow. Shimura's friend. Let's see what you do with this, All Might. His arm swelled, and he shot the most powerful wind bullet ever seen. From the rubble, a trapped woman didn't try to escape, she just shouted in the midst of desperation. All. Might. Please. Win. Civilians. Washington smash. The hero returned the air pressure. You denied it strongly and. Is his name Gran Torino? He just saved that woman, said all for one. A second later, from the news helicopter, they would report how all might seem to have deflated. He spoke with a quirk that made him heard by many. This is the state of the symbol of peace after our fight ten years ago. Can you defend them like this? His arm swelled, and he destroyed the sleeve. Muscle hypertrophy, spring limb, rivets, locomotive screw, explosiveness, lance bones. I'm going to hit you with the best combination of quirks I have. All Might, aware of the limited time he now had, ran toward All for One, and he did the same. United States of Smash. All Might clashed his fist with All for One's before crouching and hitting the villain in the chin before delivering the decisive blow to All for One's face, leaving him on the ground. Our primary goal will be for all of you to obtain provisional hero licenses, said Aizawa, and all the students felt the pressure on their shoulders. Yes, sir. A license grants you responsibility to society. You'll intervene when civilians' lives are at risk. This carries a huge weight on your shoulders. Not to mention the Y exam for that. The door opened, and Midnight, Cementos, and Ectoplasm entered. You will create your special moves, said the four teachers. Finally, a hero curriculum, shouted everyone, very excited. Key word, specials, think of techniques that will ensure your victory, said Ectoplasm, very serious. Like my giant bite detention or All Might's United States of Smash in his showdown against All for One. These techniques should represent yourselves. We won't accept copies of Hero's techniques you admire just because I admire them a lot and want to be like him, warned Cementos. These special techniques will one day be your signature. Just like American cities, accompanied by a smash, are All Might's signature technique, said Midnight, smiling. Or the recipro, as the signature techniques of the older and younger brother. Take your hero costumes and let's go to Battlefield Gamma, ordered Aizawa. Cementos is waiting for us. Unlike her classmates, who had to imagine everything, Izumi didn't. She only reviewed what she already had, force push and force pull. Absorb. Stun with the force. Ecstasy field, with this power, she can numb the perceptions of a group, making all enemies near the Jedi enter a catatonic ecstasy. Destroy droid, all droids within a 6 meter radius are destroyed with concentration and a Jedi hand movement. Disarm droid. Force scream, using the force, a Jedi could call others to their position. This was a literal scream that echoed through the force. For those who heard the call, it was almost impossible to resist. Force suppression. Heal with the force, the Jedi can heal themselves or heal a friend. Wave of plants, it is based on channeling life energy into plants, allowing the user to enhance the plant in terms of shape and speed of growth, reaction, and making it catch those around it. Meanwhile, she sat watching her classmates working. Ectoplasm dodged Ojiro many times before kicking him. You move exactly like any other person with a tail. Use something unconventional, or your enemies will defeat you in seconds. How about this? Asked Mina, trying to resist her embarrassment as her acid sprayed like a hose without water pressure. In that case, cup your hands, leaving a space in the middle, and then separate your middle and ring fingers, like a V that will allow the acid to spray under pressure, advised ectoplasm. That's great, thanks sensei, said Mina, now happy. I've thought of. Some kind of electric sword or something, Denki said, trying to concentrate golden lightning in his hand and shape it into a sword. It's. Harder. Than you'd think, he grumbled. Focus on maintaining the lightning, said Ectoplasm. Momo created multiple objects non-stop, without pausing to breathe. As she created, she dodged Ectoplasm's kicks and countered, thanks to previously created objects. They also tried to keep her skin armed at all times, to have weapons ready to be expelled and counterattack an enemy if necessary. Besides Izumi, Bakugo was the most advanced, releasing technique after technique, destroying one clone after another. A few days later, 
Ectoplasm and Tokoyami developed a special move, with dark shadow covering Tokoyami's body, and with that darkness armor, Ectoplasm and Aizawa focused on teaching martial arts to the bird-like boy and his stand. Class 1A students were ready to act in the exam. Ready to win and obtain their licenses. The days leading up to the licensing exam seemed to run even faster, and finally, they were there. Get off the bus. We have arrived, said Aizawa, and his students followed suit. The place where the provisional hero license exam will take place is. Tacoba National Stadium. I'm getting nervous. Complained Kyoka, rubbing her arms. Don't let your fears control you, guys, said Izumi calmly, her eyes closed as she meditated, right there and standing. I hope I can get it, said Mineta. It's not about whether you can. It's about going in and getting IT, said Aizawa, loud and clear. Slash slash slash. The other students from all the academies present had allied to first take the UA students out of the game. It was a tradition that had never been broken since UA positioned itself at the top of the educational ladder, and the jealousy from other academies had remained there. They cornered them between many formations of earth, which were impossible to climb due to their wave-like shape. Then, students from other schools surrounded them until they were in a wide crescent and without hesitation, with lies like it's nothing personal, they threw the balls without UA students being able to dodge. They calculated they would get a maximum of 40 or even 50 points each, just by eliminating UA and then they could betray each other. It was the perfect cornering. The point taking perfectly calculated. The tradition of crushing and humiliating UA was something that would never be broken because it worked perfectly. UA always had to try again months later, and that was something they all enjoyed. The balls. More than 340 balls had stopped in the air. This made them nervous. So, you've stopped most of the projectiles in the air and are ready to throw them back at us, huh? said a guy who looked like a male version of Izumi, but with black hair, throwing three balls at a guy with organic rock skin, who massaged the three balls, hardening them. Here you go. Don't miss, the rocky skin guy asked his companion. The guy with long black hair, wearing a red scarf and black clothes, grabbed the balls. They won't even know where my boomerang, crescent moon trajectory will hit, he said as the balls went under the ground. Everyone down, I'll take care of this, said Kyoka, with great confidence in her words, connecting her earlobes to her gloves. Heartbeat fuzz. Kyoka's sound vibrations destroyed the ground and brought out the enemy's balls, which hit a few rocks harmlessly. Dark Shadow pursued two students, but one of them, like a turtle retreating into its shell, disappeared for a moment, and instead, the balls hit three others who were distracted, adding points for Tokoyami. The guy who looked like a male version of Izumi created an earthquake, completely changing the terrain. Izumi didn't stay as defenseless as a mysterious attacker seemed to think, for she jumped to the right, dodging it. For anyone else, the girl had disappeared, but she turned and sent a force push, pushing her away. The girl simply left. Hanta appeared with Uraka, with a new plan, and they shared it with Izumi, who agreed. Izumi made many roses sprout in the area, confusing everyone, before sending them a force push, knocking them to the ground, and then, rocks that were weightless, thanks to Uraka and tied to ribbons, fell behind all those students. They thought the attacker had failed, but it was just how Hanta's ribbon wouldn't be lost, and everyone was stuck to the ground, allowing UA to steal their points and move on to the next exam. Yao Yorozu Momo felt happy to think of herself as a very smart girl. Right now, her intelligence was being tested in a chess game where she and her classmates were losing. But who did all this? How was it possible that they coordinated so well? The first thing they did was to disable Kyoka with a loud sound. Right after that, they broke the windows to disable Mezo's multiple vision. It was one attack after another, systematic, coordinated, like turning on the air conditioning and forcing Tsuyu to hibernate. They literally welded the doors shut. Momo was getting desperate, and when Kyoka went to take off her jacket for Tsuyu to use, Momo had two ideas. Here you go. Wrap yourselves up with this thermal blanket. She opened her vest. Kyoka blushed. Yo. Yamomo. Why are you? Ignoring the cold as best she could and absolutely blushing, Momo dropped her vest as her body began to shake uncontrollably, trying to warm up. But she ignored it, gritted her teeth and fists, then knelt down. I'm really sorry, guys, Momo said to her teammates, while a confident smile appeared on her face and a light between violet and pink emanated from her back, indicating that she was creating something. Creating it wasn't easy, it's by far the largest object I've ever created. 
Outside the room, a lavender-haired girl sat calmly, sipping her tea. It's time. Get them all ready to enter now. The most intense and loudest sound they had ever imagined began to reach them. The window shattered, the metal crumpled, the concrete exploded, sonic attack of very high frequency, all her servants began to fall to the ground, her porcelain teacup shattered. Inside the room, Momo, Kyoka, and Shoji remained conscious as best they could, but the sound waves from the giant speaker caused their bones to resonate and shake uncontrollably. Curse you. Yaoyorozu Momo. Intelligi Psycho passed out, along with her assistants. The UA team left the room they were locked in and started to score points. Suyu woke up and began to score points too, with a wicked smile on her face. UA had just beaten Sei. Now that we only have 100 members, please look closely. Battlefield? Ochako asked, confused. Why? Izumi began to wonder before seeing the fake city destroyed. What's happening here? Horrified, Denki, Mineta, Momo, and Kyoka questioned. This is the next and final stage of the exam, the proctor said. It's time to test your rescue skills and knowledge. There are people there. Shoji exclaimed. How did they get there? A surprised and terrified Rikido asked. Allow me to introduce your examiners, members of the Help Us Company. They'll grant or deduct points based on how you act towards them. Can you actually have a job like that? A skeptical boy asked. It's not surprising that such a job exists, considering we're all part of Hero Academies, another boy said. It's up to you to carry out this rescue properly, and in the end, all points will be totaled by the committee to decide if you've passed the exam. The walls dropped, and everyone started running to find the supposed injured. And soon, Class 1A felt overwhelmed. Why don't we demand rescue tasks? The whole UA wondered, resisting falling into despair. No, it's a terrorist act, it has to be bigger. A boy told a girl, who was extending her arms. I'll clear this area for rescue helicopters to land. A hairy boy said, moving his arms to clear the area. Hikari told me the first aid area should go over there. One boy said to another. In that case, I'll set up a protection area considering the size, the first one said. Okay. I'll handle intervention protocol duties, a third classmate said. Izawa crossed his arms. Just as I thought. This is where things get tough. Much of Class 1A was receiving a scolding from a member of HUC we've just been victims of a terrorist attack, we're injured and scared, heroes are hope and well-being personified. Listen, everyone was surprised by Azumi's abrupt change, I know how bad this looks, but you must not be afraid. The HUC member blushed when his face ended up between Jedi's breasts. He had to admit to the green-haired girl that this pseudo-maternal tone was a good way to handle the situation. Everything will be fine. My friends will help your grandfather but I have to take you to a safe place, okay? 18 points for you, he said after some thought. It's a pleasure to meet you, I'm Yurashi Anasa, alias, Gail, you'll be fine, I promise. He made them float, not just them. He uses different types of wind, according to the weight of the person or the debris he's clearing, an HUC member said, watching what the boy was doing. He has great control over his kosei. You're taking unnecessary risks, fewer points. Over here my leg is broken. A man pretended. Someone's here, but they're trapped under a lot of debris, still conscious, Momo said. I'll make the ruins float, Ochako said, approaching and joining her fingertips. But Momo created a barrier, hitting her brown-haired friend in the stomach. Wait a minute, Uraka. Look closely, part of the wall supports the adjacent building and is about to collapse. We must be careful, or it could fall. Well, in that case... I'll create beams to support the walls, and you have to make the debris inside the area where he is float, Momo said, opening her shirt and creating the first beam. Also, those on his legs. Leave it to us, Rikido and Saro said, with one reinforcing a beam with many rocks and the other using his tape to secure it. I'll remove most of the ruins and make a path for us, Uraka said, floating one rubble after another and passing them to her classmates. A little rough around the edges, but not bad. 25 points for each. Elsewhere. Our arms hurt a lot. We're injured. Help yourselves. Bakugo shouted. Hey, Baku bro, it's not. In reality. We're victims of minor and low priority injuries, the woman said. The guy realized in a single glance, more points. Even so, that violent attitude doesn't help. Ah, the woman was scared by Bakugo's face. It seemed time to celebrate now that the members of the Help Us Company were out of danger. 
an explosion occurred, and someone emerged from the smoke. Rescue and fight, can you do both? Unexpectedly, the hero gang Orca, a man with mutant Kosei that gave him the head of a killer whale, would be the examiner for the final test. Rescue and fight, can you do both? Unexpectedly, hero gang Orca, a man with a mutant Kosei giving him the head of a killer whale, would be the examiner for the final test. Gang Orca's assistants began firing cement bullets from devices straight at where the students stood, covering the supposed civilians. But a green-haired examinee stepped forward boldly, extending her hand. We can and we will, challenged Midoriya Izumi aka Ashla, causing the cement bullets to halt. I return your gift. Thank you, by the way, the cement bullets, now hardened, flew back at the assistants, who either fired back or took cover, some were hit. Evacuate everyone, get them inside. Ordered a boy from another academy, who could very well be the male version of Izumi but with black hair. The most notable part of his hero costume was a pair of thick green straps over each shoulder. Joined in the front to two black plates with gold embellishments covering the sides of his chest, black elbow pads dressed with black pants, black wristbands, a golden jaw covering his cheeks. He also wore baggy pants with some small green marks and smooth black boots with heeled soles. The boy ran alongside Izumi. I'll stop them with tremors at one second intervals. Izumi nodded behind him, tapping the ground and levitating large chunks of earth, like rocks, which he then threw at gang Orca's assistants and the hero himself. But the mutant Orca hero sent a powerful sound wave at them all, paralyzing several, although it didn't stop the rocks that had already been thrown and hit several of the assistants. It's not so easy. To make a hero lose, gang Orca-san. Biku Senbu. Dancing tail whirlwind, the last thing a dozen assistants saw was the tail of the young examinee hero tailman aka Ojiro, hitting them and leaving them unconscious. The blonde landed next to the green-haired girl. Midoriya, face him, we'll continue with the evacuations. Maesai Macabues. Camouflage ambush, Froppy aka Tsuyu had blended into the environment and entangled her very long tongue between the assistant's legs and by retracting it, made them stumble. Karu no Ashi, Gurupukuresu Kiku. Frog's leg, grape crush kick, the frog girl stomped on one gang orca assistant after another. Aoyama and Hagakure teamed up. First, with Hagakure, using her. Super move. SHUKO Kusetsu. Light refraction, Toru bent light through her invisible body, blinding those nearby. Neburu buff Reza. Naval laser buffet, Yuga fired successive rays not only from his navel but also from his shoulders, which were equipped with ray openings just like his belt. But this technique put more strain on him than when he uses his normal kosei. The lasers that hit the shining Hagakure were deflected and hit Gang Orca's assistants. Now, the assistants were down, and only the professional hero remained. It was then that Steam aka Shoto entered, throwing a whole iceberg at Gang Orca, who got rid of it with his sound waves. Seeing this, he raised the temperature of his fire from inside his body, and when it reached the right temperature, he released a pillar of fire, advancing horizontally if anyone saw Shoto from the side. Unfortunately, that flame at very high temperatures was cut in two, like the flow of a river meeting a rock. Where is he aiming? Asked one of Gang Orca's assistants, confused. At the bat. What bat? He asked, still confused. A second later, Momo hit him in the face with a bat, knocking him unconscious. Why do you wear a helmet if it's not to prevent this? Asked a smiling Momo, while tossing the bat in any direction and going to help with the HUC members. Why do you use flames? Anasa asked, irritated and angry with Shoto. The air becomes unstable with heat. You easily repelled my ice. Explained Shoto, firing another fireball, which was cut by Anasa's wind. Anyway, why would I do that? Because you want all the credit. Growled the wind boy. After all, you're Endeavor's son. But before Shoto could attack or Anasa make another move, Gang Orca unleashed his sound waves and left them both on the ground. I'm fed up with you. Growled Shoto. I'm going to get my license, got it, you stupid whale? And he ignited his flames. Throw your flames at me, said Anasa. If we don't work together. Then we'll achieve nothing. Todoroki's flames flew towards Anasa. Combining forces. My fire and his wind. We'll trap him in a fire cell. We got you. Both thought. Ojiro, Suyu, Hagakure, Izumi, Mina, and Tokoyami defeated Gang Orca's last assistants and watched the flame tornado until it extinguished, and inside it, Gang Orca appeared sitting on the ground, breathing heavily and pouring water over himself. Any other villain would be crying, begging, surrendering. But not me, said the hero. I'm a professional, 
and in my youth, they did this to me, so I always carry a couple of bottles with me. All HUC members have been rescued, the exam is over, said the head examiner. Once we have recounted the scores, you will be notified if you passed or failed. It would be very easy to make a list of those who passed. But it's ten times simpler to list those who failed and would face each other in the summer exams, Yurashi, Todoroki, Yutsutsuki, and three other young people. Yurashi apologized to Todoroki, feeling it was his fault that the ice and fire user didn't pass. But the ice and fire user also apologized, saying he remembered and regretted being so cold to him in the past. It was just the beginning of a new day at UA, and there was absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Move in a single file, move quickly. You're out of line, Suyu said to Tenya. Tenya felt like a rock dropped on his back, the words out of line and non-compliance. It's the president's dilemma. Once everyone was in the classroom, Aizawa began. This semester, we'll have more intense training than before. Even if today's activities are summarized as a classroom explanation, this semester, the training will be even more intense. Suyu raised her hand. Sensei, could you tell us about the hero internship? Mina and I were discussing it before you came. The hero internship is a more formal version of the field training you had after the UA festival, Aizawa summarized briefly. Wow. I didn't know UA had a system like that, Ochako commented casually before realizing. And then why did we go through all that struggle of ideals and dreams in the sports festival? Tenya realized that was true. It's true, if we were going to have these internships, then it didn't matter if we were being watched. Because internships are supposed to take place from second year, said Aizawa, surprising them all. You should only have field training with heroes, and that's it, that would be the end of that training, and then we would have other types of training. Like the camp with the wild wild pussycats? Mineta asked, raising his hand. They shouldn't have to worry, and the internship is for them to use the connections they made at the sports festival, and that's why there's a sports festival every year, Aizawa explained. However, you have obtained your provisional licenses and are authorized to participate in internships due to extenuating circumstances, you have been recognized as heroes at a level higher than educational. The Hero Commission has granted you your identifications, which come with all the rights and duties of a hero. You have been asked to choose if you will participate. Due to the increase in villains. Eraser head ran his hand over his face as he heard a knock on the door. Anyway, I'll let the top three students of 3A explain everything. You may come in. The door opened, and three young people entered, led by a short, muscular blonde boy with a simple face, small blue eyes, followed by a girl with long, blue hair, and an hourglass figure, and the trio of students was completed by a boy with spiky blue hair, elf ears, and hunched posture. It was like Laliette and Sasuke's son. We will hear about the internship from those who have the most experience. These three third-year students are the top among all UA students, those who have even greater chances of being heroes on their graduation day. They have formed their own team and are known as the Big Three of UA. I had heard of them from some students, but this is the first time I've seen them in person, said Kyoka. The girl is very beautiful, so that makes you lower your guard, Denki said, thinking for a moment, actually, they don't look like. You know, they're not like All Might or Endeavor style. The Big Three, Mina exclaimed excitedly. Very well, could you give us a brief introduction about yourselves, let's start with you, a Majiki, Aizawa requested. That blue-haired boy with elf ears and hunched posture didn't seem like much, but with a single look, he impressed the students. My. My name is. A Majiki Tamaki, he closed his eyes while trembling. He clenched his fists. And my quirk is manifest. Anything I eat, I can manifest, so I have a very strict diet. I am under the orders of the hero fat gum, he explained before letting out a sigh and going to lean against the wall. I'm Hato Nehire, I'm under the orders of the heroine Ryukyu. Our employers allow us to participate in formal jobs, just as you will. From her, I learned to always be aware of my surroundings. She once told me, you can't just throw yourself at the current villain, look if there are civilians in the area and get them away, we don't want them at risk. Now is the time for internships, where your studies become more complicated, especially in second and third year, where you will spend half the time in the classroom and the other half in your employer's office, said the second boy. I'm Tagata Mirio, my quirk is permeation. And to make it even clearer about the internships, you will no longer be treated as mere guests, not even as students. It's no longer about, just stay there and watch the great professional hero do the job, now you're going to help for real, you'll act on the scene, you'll be there, and your decisions will determine the life or death of civilians or heroes. It may sound terrifying, but it will be an invaluable experience that you simply don't acquire in school, 
but outside of it. Dot slash dot slash dot slash. Dot slash dot slash dot slash. At night, within the walls of United Alliance. What do you think about these internships? Ochako asked as she looked at her cell phone and texted Ryukyu about the internship. The idea of internships is that you return with the hero you went with on your field training, Izumi said. At this, Momo shivered and took a step back, causing curiosity. What's wrong, Momo-chan? But they answered her call. Hello, Ryukyu-san, I'm. It's a pleasure to greet you again, Ashla-chan, said the dragon heroine with good humor. Let me guess, according to the time of year. Is it internships? Unfortunately, yes. Of course, dear, come to my office. Look for Hatone hire, and she will guide you to the office to work together. Thank you very much, Ryukyu-sensei, then she looked at Momo and felt sorry for her. I was wondering if you could. Accept one more person. She. Was with an actress hero in her field training, so her experience has been limited. Of course, dear, said the dragon heroine. Who are we talking about? Krichi, Yaoyorozu Momo. Thank you very much, Izumi said as she hung up the call. She has a beautiful smile on her lips. Thought Momo, blushing, as she looked at the green-haired girl who approached her. The green-haired girl moved her lips, she was in front of her, but she didn't hear. Ya Momo. Kyoka shouted, amplifying the sound of her voice, present mic style, by connecting her headphones to her own neck, causing the raven-haired girl to jump. Are you okay? She noticed the look from the Yaoyorozu heiress that said. Are you asking me that right after almost making my heart come out of my mouth? You were like out of it, and that's why I yelled at you. Why yeah, fine, said the raven-haired girl, shaking her head from side to side to clear her mind and get back into Midoriya. What were you saying, Izumi-chan? That you'll come with me to do your internship with Ryukyu, the green-haired girl assured. A whole week, just learning to be a hero, with a professional, outside of school, and sharing with Midoriya? She thought before feigning with a beautiful smile. 